It's a great Thursday in Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome to Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. I am your host, Rondell Dono, attorney at law. Once again, I'm happy uh, to bring the law and you. I'm happy to be alive, and I'm sure you are as well. Of course, you can stream us on WESN CC and our traditional media, as well as our podcast on Strictly Legal with Rondell Dono. Uh, today we are going to speak about uh, the purpose, the functions and the legal status of commissions of inquiries. Of course, we have seen um, in the past there has been commission of inquiries that was commissioned or were commissioned by the president and um, through um, the uh, advice of the, the government of the day. Um, and of course, we have now, we also have currently, um, that is um, currently being proceeded against or proceeding from, um, is a commission of inquiry into the uh, Paria Divers incident. Uh, and of course, none other than uh, Mr. Justin Phelps, who is more than qualified um, to speak on this issue, and I'm happy to have him virtually. Just before we bring him on board, um, just a bit about Mr. Phelps. He was called to the Bar of England and Wales by the Honorable Society of Inner Temple in 95 and was admitted to practice in Trinidad and Tobago in 1996. Now he has a practical commercial and corporate litigation um, experience for nearly 30 years, appearing in a number of leading corporate commercial cases. Uh, he has been retained and appeared in several high-profile public inquiries convened by the President of Trinidad and Tobago under the Commission of Inquiry Act, including the Commission of Inquiry into the construction of the Piaco Airport, where he appeared as counsel to the Commission, and the Commission of Inquiry into the failure of regional conglomerate Clico, where he appeared for one of the subjects in the matter. Uh, he was also retained to appear at the uh, La Alturas uh, Commission of Inquiry and has advised in the, uh, respect to the public inquiry into the construction of the extension of the Point 14 Highway. Uh, so Mr. Mr. Phelps has been involved in a lot of um, uh, commissions of inquiry and of course we are here to speak today about the layman's perspective of why a commission of inquiry is important, what is its purpose and as I said we have uh, uh, virtually Mr. Justin Phelps. Good morning. Good morning, Rondell. How are you? Good to see you. Sorry I couldn't be in the studio with you, but um, this would suffice, I hope. That's all right. That's all right. We are happy to have you here. We are happy to have your um, legal expertise um, provided to the public on this issue. Now, of course, in the introduction, we spoke about um, what is, I mean, the topic is the functions and powers and legal status of Commission of Inquiries. So let's start from the basic. What is a Commission of Inquiry? A Commission of Inquiry is an inquisitorial body set up by the President in Trinidad and Tobago under the Commissions of Inquiry Act. And it is generally set up to inquire into matters which are in the public interest. I think the term used in the Act is the public welfare. So traditionally, it would um, engage the President when you had matters that the public was concerned about which required some public um, inquiry and investigation of the evidence and the facts to allay public fears about events which had occurred. Right, so, so we spoke about, okay, what, I mean, obviously it's something that, um, that is now, um, is, I mean, is commissioned by the president. Now, is it at the advice of the government or who advises on, 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 on the, um, why a public inquiry should take place? It is the, the president acting on the advice of the cabinet. Right. And um, that is how our constitution is, is set up, of course. And of course, um, how, uh, what, 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 what is the composition of, of persons um, to sit on this commission of inquiry? Traditionally, we have used, and the, the same has applied in England and throughout the Commonwealth, such as in Australia and Canada. We have used retired judges or practicing lawyers who... Um, can exhibit independence and some degree of legal acumen because typically these things require the contribution of a lawyer um, in order to 
ensure that you have a process and evidence in connection with the particular matter of public interest, which is of a particular quality. And are there any, uh, are there any number of persons in terms of whether there's a minimum number of persons that, that can sit on an on a, um, inquiry? No, you can, you can have a one-man inquiry in the Piaco Airport inquiry. I believe that there were three or four the expertise was legal. That, of course, was a construction, an inquiry into a construction project. You had a quantity surveyor who was Victor Hart. We had um, a gentleman who died who was an architect. And then, of course, you had the chairman who was a retired Chief Justice Bernard, who was, well, a retired judge, so a legal mind. Now, as, as we are speaking on the, 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 the case of the Piaco project, I know this has spanned um, 20 years um, or more, right? Um, I remember that um, project I would have competed while I was young, well, younger, right? Um, young. of, of course. <laughs> of course, just, just walk us through um, that particular um, case in terms of why there was a need to have a public inquiry versus, I mean, because I know there were parallel systems where there was a public inquiry and then there were also um, uh, criminal, criminal cases which either came from the inquiry or as a result of what um, the, uh, the, the, the DPP or the police would have investigated. Just walk us through in terms of that. Or it's perhaps a, a very good um, example to use. So it, it very often happens that there are matters that concern the public in respect of which there is insufficient evidence to bring a criminal charge and insufficient evidence to bring civil proceedings. And in those circumstances, if it is a matter of public interest, the government would instruct the president to convene a commission of inquiry. And that inquiry would be the starting point. That is exactly what happened in the Piaco Airport inquiry. The Piaco Airport inquiry was convened because there was widespread concern about the total cost of the Piaco Airport construction and concern about the validity of the bidding process and which contractors were awarded which jobs and so on. In the case of the Piaco Airport, what happened was that the Commission of Inquiry sat and it investigated and pursued different lines of inquiry. And it was on the basis of the report that was written that subsequent criminal investigation took place and subsequent civil proceedings, I believe, may have been brought. But certainly um, the, the report recommended criminal investigation and the rising out of that criminal investigation, there were criminal charges brought. So, so therefore, it, 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 it appears as though it, it is almost as though it's a preliminary inquiry into um, an event where you don't have sufficient facts to persecute, to, uh, well, no, to prosecute, it, sorry. Yeah, it, you have to be careful. It is certainly not a preliminary inquiry. One of the concerns about commissions of inquiry that has been expressed and, and discussed in the cases is that it ought not to be um, resemble and ought not to... Um, pretend to be making any findings in connection with criminal or civil liability. All it does is investigate facts and make recommendations. So the, the extent to which a commission of inquiry properly directed would go would be to say that on the basis of the evidence unfolding before that which unfolded before us, there ought to be a criminal investigation into A, B or C or a civil inquiry into um, civil proceedings in respect of any particular matter. Now, of course, you know, in, of course, you know, in our judicial system, especially um, when someone is summoned as a witness uh, to appear, whether it is in civil proceedings or criminal proceedings, um, if one fails to appear, there can be consequences. Um, how does the how does the commission of inquiry treat? persons who, um, let's say, are unwilling uh, to attend as witnesses um, to give um, information or evidence before it? Under the Commission of Inquiry Act, witnesses before the inquiry are compellable. So what that means is that you can, by using the coercive powers of the High Court, enforce their attendance. And if they um, do not attend, they are subject to a fine. Now, that is a matter that has been 
the subject of discussion regarding having to be amended because the the penalty for not attending before a commission of inquiry is i think it was 2000 and may still be 2000 trinidad and tobago hmm. dollars so that there is no incentive really for someone who possesses important information in the public interest to um, put himself before a commission of inquiry and be subjected to questions from the, the commission or the lawyers participating in the commission of inquiry. And I think it has been felt generally in the um, legal world for some years that that ought to be amended so that the penalties are stiffer. But what about, um, okay, you are fined. Does that form part of a criminal record? It does. Um, I, am, I need to be careful. I am not a criminal practitioner, but as far as I am aware, under the act, it is an offence. And I think that you can only find where there has been the commission of an offence. And, of course, um, I know this is an obvious question, but why, why does it need, or why there is a need for a commission of inquiry to be publicised or to be aired on um, live television? Because one of its primary objectives is to allay public concern in connection with matters that the public is concerned about, allay public fears, and um, reinstitute trust in the, the country's institutions and systems. So, for example, um, one of the one of the more famous English public inquiries was into a riot in what I think was called Red Lion Square. And the purpose of the inquiry in that case, and it would be similar to the Paria Commission of Inquiry, I would think, would be to um, ensure or assure the public that the systems were working and that there would be penalization where penalization was due and that they could continue to have trust in their country's institutions, including, for example, the police service in the case of the Red Lion um, riot. And of course, you know, in our, our jurisdiction, um, the, there's a lot of politics involved when it comes to commission of inquiries. Um, there are a lot of uh, persons who may state that this person is not qualified, or this commissioner, proposed commissioner is not qualified, or they may bias, or they may be a, a parents of bias. How does the president, through the advice of the cabinet, deal with, with, with issues? I mean, we'll get to the Paris issue shortly um, in terms of uh, perceived bias or, 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 um, or, or the fact that someone is not highly qualified or skilled in that area? Well, that's not the, the president's concern. The president would act on the advice of cabinet. It is for the public to make, um, it, it make up its own mind. That is, the court of public opinion would determine whether they, um, there is credibility in the, in the tribunal or not. But it has not in practice, in my view, been a big problem because it, under both governments, in my experience, um, the caliber of the persons appointed to the respective tribunals has been high and substantial. Of course. Um, Justin, um, let's take a pin right there. We have to take a break. You're watching Strictly Legal. We'll be right back. General Assembly of the Caribbean Broadcasting Union from August 15th to 17th at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Golf Resort in beautiful Tobago. This year's theme, Media and Information Literacy. Tobago is the smaller sister in the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, nestled in the heart of the Southern Caribbean. 
Enjoy 116 square miles of historical sites and award-winning eco-friendly land and marine spaces, including the magical Nylon Pool. And you're just a ferry away from a Trinidad adventure. Our warm hospitality, rich cuisine and unique traditions will inspire you to extend your stay. Tranquil Tobago is where the Caribbean connects for the 53rd CBU Assembly. To register and enjoy discounts on Caribbean airline flights, visit www.caribbroadcastunion.org. Come and experience Beyond Ordinary. And we are back. You are watching Strictly Legal uh, with my guest, Justin Phelps, attorney at law. And we are speaking about the functions, uh, legal status and powers of Commission of Inquiry. Um, Justin, before the break, we were speaking about um, the, the type of inquiries or rather the qualifications of, of, of these commissions, commissioners. Sorry. Um, let's deal with the timeline in terms of how long can a Commission of Inquiry last and who sets the, the, the scope um, in terms of, um, of how, it, how it runs? Uh, again, uh, well, you're asking me two different things yes. there. Timeline is indefinite. Um, some of these inquiries have taken years. The, the Clico inquiry, for example, took um, a few years well. Because these inquiries are designed and set up to allay public fear and to um, reinstitute public trust in the systems of government, there is no time limit ordinarily set. But the government of the day would have time ambitions which they would um, can impose upon the tribunal. But really it is a flexible thing in, in order to ensure that every no stone, stone is left unturned in respect of matters that the public is concerned with. And then the second part of the question in terms of setting out the scope, um, is it, does the scope um, have so, any have any um, uh, indication of timeline or is it is it separate? No, um, sometimes the government would say that we want a report within six months. Traditionally, that has been extended because the commission simply has not been able to complete in the, in the time set. So what governments do is they try to get it done as quickly as possible. Um, because again, it is in the public interest that anything that is of concern be investigated with dispatch. But um, very often you find that there are extensions required in order to um, complete the work of the commission. I should say that the scope, you use the term, the scope of work of the commission, that is set out in the terms of reference of the commission, drafted on the advice of the government, because under our system of government, of course, there is no better um, embodiment of the public interest than our elected officials. Of course. And um, you would have also advised on the, the, um, the public inquiry into the construction of the extension of the Point 14 Highway. Um, the outcome of that inquiry, was there any outcome in terms of any, um, well, let's say, any civil or criminal proceedings coming from that particular... No, that inquiry hasn't started yet. Okay. In, in fact, um, that is one of the inquiries in which I think a lot of time is being spent um, doing the preliminary investigative work. So what a lot of people don't realize is that these inquiries are public inquiries, but they, the public element of it really is hearing oral evidence. Very often in these matters, especially with a construction dispute, you will have copious documentation that the commissioners need to weigh, and they can do that in private. So although you don't see hear public hearings being held, that does not mean that a commission of inquiry is not sitting and pouring through documentation with a view to satisfying its terms of reference. And let's look at the La Salturas Commission. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that, that correctly. Um, yes. Yes, uh, inquiry. Just, let's, um, can you just refresh us as to what was that inquiry about and what was your rule? La Salturas, the, the La Salturas building project is a housing project just off the Lady Young Road. I'm sure that you would know it. Yeah. If, if you, um, it would, you, your memory would be jogged if you drive over the, the Lady Young Road. And there were accusations made that there had been negligence and um, 
graft in the construction project. Um, that came to nothing because that was one of the inquiries in which um, th there was more than a suspicion that there were political motives in convening it. Um, it was just a housing project which suffered from delay, cost overruns, and some design flaws, like um, any number of other construction yes, projects. a lot of them, I should say. Um, but uh, and, 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 and this is the concern, of course, that um, these inquiries, some of them have outcomes, positive outcomes, some of them don't. Um, then we look at how much these inquiries cost um, and, and, and who's footing that bill and whether or not um, there's, any, there's any fees cap in terms of how much the commissioner is paid, how much the attorney is paid, who pays the attorney, etc. Um, how is there any rules in terms of um, how, the, in terms of the, the the fees, or rather the, the cost of these commissioner inquiries, and, and, and is there any is there any cap, or is I mean, is it basically that okay, whatever the bill comes up to, the state has to pay it through the taxpayers? Yes, but the, the state, like every other client, negotiates. The state doesn't pay lawyers what lawyers want to be paid. A, a lawyer might suggest, if he is being retained in, in respect of a particular commission, he may suggest a fee that the government will not agree to. The government will always ask that reasonable fees be charged. There are, as you would know, Rondell, because you're an attorney at law as well, there are scale fees recommended in the behind, or in the schedules to yes. the CP, or that is the civil proceedings rules. So it, it, it can be expensive, but again, it is an expense justified in the public interest. For example, the PR Co inquiry, you were investigating there for something to which you cannot attach a money value. That is the trust that the citizens of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago can repose in their elected officials, because the question there was whether the country had spent near to $2 billion, that is back in the 90s, yeah. um, unnecessarily. So the justification for the expense and the time involved in commissions of inquiry is always that you are investigating in the public interest, or to use the term which I believe is used in the Act, um, for the public welfare. Yeah, and uh, let's let's now uh, turn to the current commission of inquiry, um, which is the uh, I'm not sure of the exact name, but it's in relation to the Paria um, divers tragedy. Um, can you just give a, a, a bit of overview as to, I mean, yes, we understand this has been a lot of public outcry um, in terms of the facts. Why is it that the, the um, divers have died? Who's blaming whom? Um, but just give us an overview as to what, why there was a need for public inquiry versus just being an investigation and persons deciding to um, um, file civil proceedings or, or the police investigating to commission uh, criminal proceedings. Okay, well, I, I have to rely only on what I know in the public domain Indeed. before we get to the legal questions about commissions of inquiry. As far as I am aware, um, it is a properly convened commission of inquiry because you had several citizens of Trinidad and Tobago die in circumstances which are opaque at the moment and require to be investigated. What is interesting about the Paria Commission of Inquiry is it is being set up by the sitting government to inquire into um, itself, in a way. What we have had in Trinidad and Tobago with commissions of inquiry is that succeeding governments convene these inquiries to sort of investigate what the previous government had done. Yeah. So, in, for example, in Piaco, what you had was the PNM government instituting a commission of inquiry to inquire into a UNC project. In CLECO, I believe it was the UNC government, I'm quite sure about that, who convened the commission of inquiry to investigate what they were um, suggesting might have been a PNM bailout of the, the conglomerate. Same with Las Alturas. Las Alturas was the UNC government convening a, a, a commission of inquiry on the doorstep of a general election to inquire into a PNM building project. What, what distinguishes, I'm sorry to have gone through all of that That's detail. Okay. 
is really to make this point that in the case of the Paria Commission of Inquiry, it is a PNM government convening that Commission of Inquiry to inquire into the conduct um, potentially, and, and I have to use that word deliberately, of a state enterprise. So th that is the public welfare. That is that you can't have citizens dying in circumstances that are not properly and publicly explored. That is why the Commission of Inquiry was convened. That is the distinguishing feature of the Commission of Inquiry. Um, to get into a little bit of the detail, yeah. the, the terms of reference were published. I did read them after you invited me to, to do this interview. Um, they are all encompassing, and the question seems to be whether any person was um, responsible for the debts of these citizens, and if any person was, then what ought to be done about it? Um, th 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 there is no possibility, in my view, that there would be any implication against the, the state enterprise that is parry of fuel. Because as you know, um, corporate criminal liability depends on a series of rather complicated rules. And unless you can uh, attribute responsibility for what a, 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 an employee of the company was doing to the company itself, which is a difficult legal proposition, then the company is free of any culpabilities. I don't think that that is going, um, yeah. that there's not going to be any finding, touching parry of fuel trading. But what about lifting, what about the, the concept of lifting the veil so that, so that it removes any, any um, protection um, against the, um, well, the board of directors or whomever are responsible and, and prosecuting them directly? No, the, the lifting the corporate veil is a civil law or a corporate law concept. In order to fix criminal liability on a company, you have to identify the person who has committed the act or omission with the company itself. It is called the uh, th different books, different texts refer to it differently, but it is the, the theory of identification um, for liability in the corporate context. Remember, the difference here is you're not suing the company for civil relief, you are trying to accuse or fix the company with a criminal liability. Indeed. The company only acts through individuals, as you know, a company is a fictitious um, legal concept. And therefore, unless the individual who is, uh, who has committed the act or omission is the very embodiment of the company then you don't get anywhere near to liability in the case of the company. There was a, there was a meaningful case that, that arose, for example, out of criminal negligence um, arising out of a ship so that the, 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 the persons on the ship, the crew were negligent. And there was an attempt to indict the company that owned the ship. And those principles, I think, in, in the late 80s in England, that is where those principles were developed. And as far as I am aware, they are the modern principles of corporate criminal liability. So I don't think that you get anywhere near to parry of fuel trading. Um, you, you probably will be investigating and the public will benefit because a lot of light will be shed yeah. on the circumstances in which these divers um, perished, which is completely unacceptable in any country. But it is nothing to do and I'm sure that that is what is going to be found. It, absolutely nothing to do with the government or the state enterprise. It, it, it is some step or act or mission that was um, effected by a human being, an individual, that is likely to be found to be responsible. And the, the question for the Commission of Inquiry would be what recommendations it could helpfully make to validate um, in the public's mind and for the public welfare. Um, the events which have happened. And therefore that does not mean that, um, that there is no, uh, that there can't be any civil remedies or there can't be any actions um, that, would, no, that would commence in the civil courts? Not at all. The, the, the Commission of Inquiry could recommend it, but if it does not recommend it, that doesn't stop the attorneys for the divers taking any proceedings either, um, well, any civil proceedings.
this 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 will be very interesting in terms and of course regardless of the outcome there will always be public opinion and outcry uh, but of course this is left to be seen and i'm sure there will be some sort of recommendations in terms of how to uh prevent so similar things like this from occurring. Uh, and, and, and I think that that is one of the specific items on the terms of reference that I read is the requirement that the commissioners must recommend how we avoid this in the future. Indeed. Uh, Justin, we, we are out of time, but this, this has been a very interesting conversation. I don't know if you have any last words to state. I'm very glad to have been here. It's good to see you again. Thank you. It is good to see you virtually. And next time, we will try to do it face to face. Indeed, because I am, I am sure there will be a continuation, particularly coming out from the outcome of this commission of inquiry, and maybe we can have a discussion on that. Anytime. So thank All you. All the best. Thank you Good so much. See you Thank you Take so care. much. Thank you. Thank you. You have been I'm looking at our Justin Phelps attorney at law. Um, so thank you so much, Justin. And thank you, viewers and listeners, uh, for looking or for watching Strictly Legal on WESN Contents Capital. Don't forget WESN and Strictly Legal with Rhonda Dono. And just a quote before I go. Um, kindness is free. Sprinkle it everywhere. Have a good day. God bless.